What's up, guys? Welcome back to another uh, 239 Flies DIY video. Uh, today we're going to be tying up EJ's Spring Break Minnow. Uh, cool little easy pattern that our shop dad, EJ Sigety, uh showed us how to tie. Um, we were fishing a bunch of snook on the beach the last, uh, last month and a half. So, uh, you know, it's nice something new to throw at them. Um, you can throw this on a floating line, intermediate line. Um, you can tie this on a SC15 size 1 or size 2. It's, it's a pretty versatile low pattern. You don't have to throw it on the beach either. You can, you can go catch redfish in a stereo bay on this guy. And those fish are smart enough to tie their own flies, so you know it works. Um, so I'm going to show you how to tie it. We're going to show you how to tie it. Thanks for letting me sit in. Yeah, thanks for showing. Let's do it. We're going to tie this fly on a Gamagatsu SC15 size 1. Um, you can probably step it down to a 2 or you can step it up to a 1-0, but it's a real simple fly. It's all top tied um, and it's small, so it's, you know, it's beach bait. It's a good little all-around pattern. Everything eats a minnow. So uh, we'll start with some mono thread and we're going to wind it back, not quite all the way to the back of the hook shank, just about to right there, just in front of the or, or, uh, point of the hook. I like to put in a little bit of red SF before I tie in uh, the, the white SF, just for a little bleeding gills if you want to. Um, you don't have to, the kit doesn't come with it, but it's a nice little step. Um, it, uh, it looks nice. So, plus you're not going to use a lot of it, so, you know, one pack goes a long way. So a little SF, we're going to tie that in first, nice and short. You can see that a little bit of this goes a really long way. So tie that in, lift it up, trim it off, our underbelly, and we tie this in so that um, this polar fiber or pseudo hair, whichever you're using, uh, doesn't foul around the hook shank. It's just a little, the synthetic fibers are a little stiffer than these synthetic fibers, so it'll kind of, you know, act as a little anti-fouling method. These SF fibers don't come on a hank, so word of advice, put a zip tie on them and then dull Casey's scissors up by cutting it. Ha! Take that. All right, so from here, we're going to take just a little bit of SF and this is, this is what we're going to use to build our underbelly. We're going to use our, our patented tapering method putting it on the table, spreading it out, and then just kind of pull the center out, twist it with your fingers, with your fingers, and just build a little taper. Again, you don't need much of this, and we're going to trim it up some more when we're done. Then we're going to tie that in right on top, right behind that red. All right, so trim this off. That's kind of how that's done. Be careful not to clip your mono thread. Very important. We'll start tying in the secret sauce. I guess it's really not too much of a secret. Uh, pseudo hair or polar fiber. Same stuff. And we're going to tie in white first. Get you a little clump here. And what, about three bunches? Not a lot. Go easy. Lay this out. Do the whole pseudo hair prep thing. Bunch them together. Comb out the loose ends. You kind of want this clump to be um, shorter than the clump you're going to tie in on top of it in the olive. So you're going to pull out just a few of the long ones. with your mono thread, give it a nice wrap around there and then tie it down. Don't get too crazy wrapping this one down because it's, it's, um, you can add a lot of bulk in a hurry with your thread wraps. And that's how you get, uh, you know, weak looking flies. Grab your olive hide. A little bit more olive than the white, right? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, well, you tell me. Yeah, I like it because you've already got the SF beneath that, so I try to equal the SF and the little white pseudo that we pulled in 
already. Pro tip, we're gonna, we're gonna use as much of the pseudo hair or polar fiber. Doesn't matter, same doll. They harvest the stuff from the same doll. Field grown, organic, free range dolls. <laughs> and, uh, and then tie it in. So let's, uh, all right, so maybe about four clumps with this. Four to five. I guess we could always play it by ear. This is definitely a fly that a beginner can tie and tie a really nice looking fly first time through. And it's effective. I, mean, I caught a Stero Bay redfish on this fly, and those fish are smart enough to tie their own flies. So, so measure this up, and see how you just want it just a little bit longer than the top one. That's going to give it a nice looking profile. Is that the secret for the profile? That's it. Yep. There it is. We're giving you all the secrets today. All right, and then you're going to trim off this end. Make sure you get it nice and clean because that is going to make your life easier on this step. So from here you're going to measure it up. You're going to tie it in just in front of the white. And we're going to try to keep this thread nose as small as we can. So this is, a, this is kind of how I like to do it. I'm sure EJ is going to do it a little bit differently. But I mean, the, the, this stuff is bulky, so you have to be careful. I tend to tie it more forward. Okay. Just, I, I think it, it wiggles a little bit more in the water, gives it a little bit more action. But again, it's a little bit more difficult to tie because you can see what there. Yeah. It just pulls yeah. loose. Yeah. So the mono thread is so be careful. really, really sensitive. If you cut too close like I did, it wants to unravel. So. so be careful. That's the trickiest part about this fly. So use you some real sharp scissors and just and just cut your fly to pieces. And just kind of taper that front when you tie it on there. And then truthfully, you don't even really have to go too hard wrapping this down because we're gonna loon UV it and finish it up and make it look real nice. So just enough to kind of hold it in there. And then when you go to comb it out, it should stay put. Oh, sorry there, buddy. How's it looking from that side? That side's looking good. That side's looking good. You want to borrow these? These are the sharp ones. Well, these are okay. These are pretty. You can tell Casey was filing these down yesterday. Did you file these down? With my teeth. Yeah, that's good. That's good. They're sharp. This is the last little tying step, really. We're going to tie in some lateral scale. You can use the thin lateral scale or the thick lateral scale um, after a few Test runs with the thicker stuff, we have found that we like the thinner stuff a little bit more. Um, doesn't flap in the wind as much. <laughs> so, and you're gonna tie this in kinda as a lateral line, going right down in between the white and the olive pseudo hair. And don't get crazy carried away with this. Just put in three wraps to hold it in place on this side, and then I like to bring it around that little nose and then tie it in place on this side. Just three wraps, done and done. Pull it back. And I like to trim this off just a little bit longer than the pseudo hair. Makes it look nice. All right, so whip finish. If you got a whip finish tool and you know how to use one of those, God bless you. I think if you followed this thing from day one, you know that we've really, uh, we're kind of finger whip finish guys, but uh, you know, I'm not knocking tools. Be careful with the mono thread that it doesn't come unraveled on you. And you're going to whip finish right in place. Don't pull too tight because that's how you lose everything. And trim it off. So we're going to use yellow eyes on this pattern. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull this back and get a nice little spot to put in my zap gel right on the lateral scale. And then on the same spot on this side, I'm going to do the same, just a little bit. And then just ever so gently slide it into place. And then push it down with your bodkin. Don't use your fingers. If you use your fingers to push this down, you get glue on your fingers, then you end up lifting the eyes off of the fly. And it's, it's a disaster. Nobody wants that. Use this again, 
Just get it on there so that it sticks. And then you're going to push it on there. That's looking good. We got an unruly guy here. Get out of there. Check for symmetry. Oh yeah. I'm going to finish it off with a little loon, UV thin. Not get too carried away. Just put a little dab on there. And then I'll work it around with my bodkin. Little by little. Because we don't want to, we don't want to go too crazy with this. This is how you end up just making a glue ball at the end if, you, if you're not careful and you don't take your time. The old glue ball fly. Hit it with your light. Ooh, look at that. Look at that UV, uh, all that UV stuff in there. That's fun. And then from here, I like to just, I know, I know you probably don't do this. Oh, yeah, because that's already perfect. I like to. I'm glad there's there's no symmetry in nature. Because, <laughs> my flies because our flies symmetry. aren't symmetrical. Well, I think sometimes one-eyed flies fish better than two-eyed flies. I think fish recognize that. So if you lose an eye, no big deal. No big deal. Fish take advantage of that. And then there's the blind fly with no eyes on it. So I'll just taper this uh, SF up a little bit at the bottom, if you want to. I want to. I'll take off some of these guys that just didn't quite make the cut. That will fish. EJ's Spring Break Minnow.